Okay, so we had started the webinar. And with that, I'll hand it over to the presenter, Sherwin Rezulzadeh. Thank you, Jasmine. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning and good evening, wherever you are. I am Sherwin Rezulzadeh, a senior geoscience technical advisor working in UK and uh, CGG Geosoftware. So today outline of the webinar is, uh, I'm talking about the anisotropic tools that we are providing uh, uh, to study the seismic, uh, azimuthal seismic data to investigate the anisotropy and possibly uh, extract the fracture uh, uh, locations. So in the webinar today, I will talk about a little bit about Geosoftware portfolio, introduction to the anisotropy and the Geosoftware application we provide. And uh, within those applications, we have different methods, indirect methods, direct methods, and uh, finally the conclusion. Within Geosoftware, so we have uh, Hamson Russell for seismic uh, reservoir characterization uh, and advanced seismic reservoir characterization comes under JSON. So you can do advanced uh, editing of the uh, reservoir model uh, and also characterizing it using the seismic data. Petrophysical interpretation comes under power lock and Inside Earth provides advanced 3D seismic interpretation for interpreting faults, fractures, salt bodies, and also paleostratigraphic features. Advanced rock physics uh, modeling tool comes under rocket site. This is newly uh, become uh, as an independent tool uh, with the GeoSoftware portfolio. It used to be within our uh, Hamson Russell software, but now we have integrated all of the rock physics uh, uh, packages into this rock SI. Velocity modeling uh, comes under WellPro, and the reservoir modeling is done with Earth Model FT. But today I will talk about uh, Hamson Russell, JSON, and Insider, and the tools with which we provide within these applications to help us to investigate the anisotropy. But what is anisotropy? Yeah, as you know, that uh, anisotropy is the directional dependency of the material's physical properties. The simple case is shown here that we have uh, layers of the strata. So you can say that if we are, because we are talking about seismic data and seismic velocity, so which is affecting the seismic data much more uh, than the other physical properties. So seismic velocity at this direction is uh, different than at that direction. So that is making an uh, anisotropy in the seismic velocity. That is simple uh, example, but th these layers could be disturbed and that disturb disturption uh, will uh, cause, uh, it will enhance the intensity of the anisotropy. So enhanced anisotropy could be uh, uh, associated with the, uh, this disturbance, which is stressed or the fractures. So if we uh, find this anisotropy, then we can find the fracture zones using these anisotropic properties. That is the general idea. But when do we need the anisotropy? So for example, in conventional place, we have fractured carbonates. So permeability is playing main role in the fractured carbonates. Yes, there will be porosity as well, but not much, but uh, mainly permeability. So there's one example here shown here, which is a carbonate it uh, fractured the reservoir in Iran. So you see that it's 150 meters of the fracture corridors and the fractures uh, length. So this could be very important to identify this fracture to be able to locate the wells and uh, produce the, the hydrocarbon from that reservoir uh, efficiently. We have also unconventional places like shale plays, uh, which uh, we need to do frac, we need to induce uh, uh, synthetic fractures. And, uh, and also there are natural fractures in those shape places which are important, so we need to know those places. Fractured granite basements, which they have natural fractures. Again, we need to do maybe fracking to optimize that fracking. There are dense sandstones, so we need to find the natural fractures in those dense sandstones, again, do fracking. And then heavy also, then the reservoir, uh, how reservoir can uh, you know produce uh, based on the you know the, there should be some fractures otherwise uh, the heavy oil it's very difficult to produce. And uh, why do we need anisotropy? So another example shown here it is from China. This is sandstone, very dense sandstones. There are some challenges. So we need to identify natural fractures in the reservoir. Uh, why? Because we not we want to orient our wells based on those fractures. And uh, sometimes the water comes through the fractures into the reservoir, so we need to know those fractures. And uh, predicting most uh, fractured and fracturable rocks for well programs. So this is one of the challenges that we need to overcome. And uh, because of all of those effects, so we have suboptimal uh, production. So we need to enhance our production and make it optimal. 
what we can get from uh, anisotropy. Example I am showing here is another example, which is a fractured granite. It is in South Africa. Uh, there are technical benefits. So we are going to identify faults and fractures. We are going to identify the magnitude of anisotropy. And also based on that magnitude, we can, for example, infer that this magnitude is because of the stress regime or because of the fracture uh, zone. So we can hit uh, the, the, that sweet spot or uh, maybe that strikeable spot. So for us, so we can use that anisotropic magnitude for uh, our reservoir estimations. And value orientation to create optimum fracture patterns. And we can also uh, uh, estimate the fracture density and stress analysis uh, using this anisotropic information. So saying so uh, uh, about, uh, those uh, items, so we, we identified that there is a commercial benefit. So more, more efficient wells program can be uh, planned. Uh, increased and more efficient production can be uh, achieved and the better frac stage designs can be achieved. And we can also avoid water breakthroughs by identifying the place that the water comes in. And again, this is a cost-effective drilling because we are drilling in optimum places. And also avoiding any losses and uh, getting better production. So say I mentioned about uh, why and when, but how to estimate the anisotropy. Uh, we make we, we uh, used 3D seismic data for this purpose, and so GeoSoftware tools have been developed to extract reservoir anisotropy from seismic data. Uh, we provide direct estimation tools uh, and indirect estimation tools. Uh, so, for example, in the indirect methods, uh, we have a uh, inside earth fault fracture spark module, and we have geometric attributes, which is uh, available in three of the applications. This inside earth uh, will help us to fracture mapping and uh, it uses a uh, edge detection technology using some sort of uh, coherent uh, uh, energy uh, attributes. And also we can calculate discrete fracture networks and also we can uh, estimate the fracture density maps and also the volumes. The geometric attributes uh, like uh, curvature and coherency attributes, uh, it's also they also help us to identify the fracture zone and also the highly stressed zones. In the direct methods, uh, we have uh, uh, Hamson Russell, ProAZ, we have uh, velocity versus azimuth, and also we have uh, uh, the amplitude versus azimuth. So, and also we provide modeling. We have also the direct method, which is come from uh, JSON part, which is anisotropic version. This is patented uh, technology for CGG. And uh, using that uh, technology, you can get anisotropic magnitude and orientation. Then you can uh, formulate them to estimate fracture density and weakness uh, of the rock. And also it gives us the image layer. Uh, it gives us the layer interiors uh, via inversion program. Let's go a little bit about uh, indirect methods. So, as I mentioned, they, it comes uh, like a curvature analysis, uh, this, uh, and uh, this is a geometric and coherence attribute. It comes under Insight here, Thomson, Russell, and JSON. All of them have this attribute in the package. What we need to input, it's simple. So, we need just to have seismic stacks or relative inversions. Uh, why a relative inversion? Because we don't need to bias our estimation with the low frequency part which we in input into the inversion. And what we can get, we can get uh, geometric attribute measures like most negative curvature or uh, most positive curvature based on the uh, analysis we do and, and we identify which one is giving us the better estimation of the, the fractures or the stress zones. And uh, coherent event lineaments like uh, can be used as a tool to identify aligned fractures. The example shown here, this is showing the most negative curvature. So you see that the curvature pattern is uh, zones of the curvature has been shown there. So, and also this one is a coherent energy attribute, which is a sort of coherency attribute, which uh, you know that, and it will give us the breaks in the uh, seismic data. The value for this is that uh, you can identify this continuity uh, based on the faulting and fracturing, and also it's very simple to compute from easily available data sets. So, so you don't need to spend lots of money to create, for example, as uh, processed, acquired and processed the seismic data. 
how it works, it measures the event pending, like curvature, with very high detail, and it is like an indirect mode, method, uh, and it uses curvature as a proxy for strain and fracture analysis. Example shown here, so within Insider, we have a, we use advanced workflow to calculate uh, coherence energy attribute, considering the uh, structural variations and then enhance it to uh, remove the background noise and enhance the fault and fracture attributes. So as you see here that uh, this is a, our uh, coherency attribute, we call it a, a edge stacking, horizon edge stacking attribute. Uh, in the uh, plan uh, view or map view, you see that the breaks are clearly shown here and also in the vertically in the section view, you see that the uh, fault breaks and fault zone are uh, illuminated very nicely. But if you uh, compare with the other softwares or other methods, which is not uh, enhanced uh, methods, you see that the lateral is fine in the map view, it's okay, but uh, if you go to verticals, so they are not fine, so you cannot estimate or, uh, the fracture zones or the fracture zones or the fault zones. So we use these uh, attributes from inside Earth and we enhance it and uh, uh, apply other uh, uh, processes on it and we estimate the uh, fracture density and fracture network. So how we do this, we use this uh, fault fracture spark and we estimate discrete fracture networks. The input again is uh, seismic stacks and relative inversions, like uh, seismic data is shown here. And uh, we can uh, estimate fracture network sets and also fracture density and orientation, which is shown here. So we have in the middle uh, the discrete fracture network and the fracture probability map shown here. And also we can just uh, do some analysis and uh, see what is the uh, dominant direction of the fractures or just filter them out. The value is that uh, fracture, uh, we can get estimation of the fracture density from seismic discon discontinuities. And it's very simple to compute from easily available data set. Again, easily available, I am saying that it is stacked seismic data. So, or angle stack, you can use it or inversion results. How it works, uh, uses edge stacking technology to identify subtle misalignment. That was a, a indirect method. We have a, in the direct method, we have interface based, uh, which is uh, based on the uh, analyzing the seismic velocity and also based on analyzing the amplitude variations at different azimuths. So if you have a seismic data like this, so I have a, a seismic data acquired uh, at different azimuths. These are the azimuths and at different offsets per azimuth. So I have a near offset to far offset at each azimuth. So if I uh, uh, order them in a way that uh, the, for example, this near offset for all of the azimuths is shown in one panel like this. So I have near offsets here for azimuths from zero to 180 degree for near offset and to the far offset. Uh, so I, I am just uh, ordering those uh, traces. So you see that from near offset to far offset, I have those panels of the different azimuths. So from zero to 180 degree azimuths. As you see in the near offsets, we don't see that much variation in the time of the events. So, but if we go to the far offsets, you see that that uh, variation is very high. So at different offsets, we have time of the event at different times. So if let me zoom it a little bit. So this is coming from far offset. As you see, there is some uh, uh, sinusoidal uh, uh, effect on the far offset and uh, the time of the events. If you look at that, we have uh, we can say that at this location we have uh, velocity are fast because the time of the arrival is uh, shorter than this uh, the, the the one that we have is slow velocity, which is time of the arrival is high. So there there is this difference. So we can uh, use these uh, variations, and uh, this is showing us there is some velocity variations. So we can analyze these variations and to identify the the direction of the fast velocity and also the direction of the slow velocity and also the magnitude of the anisotropy. So the tool we provide is uh, within hamson Russell Pro AZ and we call this azimuthal NMO, which is which we use it for flattening the data and also analyzing the uh, anisotropy based on the velocity variations. Inputs are azimuthal gathers and uh, what we can get is uh, RMS velocities, of the uh, fast velocity and uh, slow velocity and also the orientation of the fast velocity. This could also be converted to interval velocities. And uh, we can uh, apply this uh, azimuthal velocity analysis or azimuthal NMO to flatten the data because we are going to use the amplitude variation with offset and with azimuth. Uh, so for that reason, we need to flatten the data. 
And uh, then uh, we can get also estimation of the Thompson Delta and also in the HGI medium. Example shown here, so this is the seismic data uh, co-rendered with the seismic velocity, uh, azimuthal seismic velocity. And this one is showing the direction of the uh, fast velocity and uh, these uh, this, uh, glyphs or platelets are displaying almost a possible location of the fractures and that uh, if their length is showing the magnitude of the as anisotropy and uh, their direction is the, the direction of the anisotropy or the VFAST. The value is that we can estimate the regional distress field and the fractures because the seismic velocity is a low frequency uh, and uh, the low resolution. So we are uh, saying that we are est estimating the regional distress rather than the layer distress. How it works, it measures the azimuthal NMO in the velocity analysis and converts it to azimuthal interval properties using Dick's for inversion. So then we can get the azimuthal variation within uh, that layers, that layers are the, in the seismic velocity resolution. Uh, example shown here, so we have a seismic data section is shown here. And the, the fractures has been uh, uh, displayed here and visualized here. You see this is a fault. And around that fault, you see that we have more uh, uh, concentration of the uh, fractures. So fracture, uh, fractional velocity anisotropy is shown in the colors of the glyphs. And azimuth of them is the, just the direction of that. And uh, the size of complete is also shown here. So we can uh, use that. Uh, 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 velocity to flatten our data and uh, then this time we can uh, investigate the amplitude variation with offset and with azimuth. So if we have this uh, data set uh, in different uh, azimuths, we can investigate uh, AVO variation at each azimuth. So we call this azimuthal AVO analysis. So if you look at this uh, uh, gather, so we have this uh, uh, offset gathers at different uh, azimuths, so these are the div azimuth uh, directions. And you see that uh, this event is uh, it's varying uh, uh, its amplitude value at different uh, azimuths, plus at different offsets. For how we can analyze this uh, amplitude variation with azimuth? So we use again Corizet. We input azimuthal gathers or stack data as mutual stack data. And the deliverables are anisotropic magnitude and orientation. We can also use uh, this uh, Ruger style uh, near offset and far offset attributes, attributes and we can estimate uh, uh, those Ruger style attributes from near offset and far offset data sets. We can uh, uh, estimate the azimuth of Fourier coefficients and then we can relate those to a fracture weakness, for example. And we can estimate uh, uncertainty of the direction of the uh, this uh, azimuth uh, direction of the anisotropy, and also that we have these QCs. Example shown here. This is showing uh, anisotropic magnitude and direction. So this direction of the and the map is the anisotropic magnitude, and the platelets which shown on that is the, the fractures which is shown at different directions. Yeah, the value is that we can estimate region of interest uh, fractures and also the stress fields uh, at any point of the reservoir. So if, for example, if you look at this uh, graph, which is showing we have these different directions, this is different azimuths. And this uh, color is showing the amplitude, the variation of the amplitude at, this, at different azimuths. So for example, far offset, you see that uh, lots of uh, variation is happening, but near offset doesn't uh, show that much variations. And we can have uh, amplitude versus offset for each azimuth to, to be analyzed at each time of the data sets. This is for analyzing, but uh, for the process, we apply just uh, on the batch processing. Or this uh, equation, uh, this uh, graph shows that uh, at different uh, uh, offsets, we have the different uh, variation of the amplitude with azimuth. So this azimuth amplitude. So you see that at far offset, we have more variations than the, in the near offsets. And this uh, sinusoidal wave uh, shape can be decomposed using the Fourier, uh, uh, co uh, Fourier uh, analysis. And uh, the coefficients of the Fourier can be related to, for example, the fracture density and fracture weakness. This is provided within uh, ProAZ. So how it works, it measures the amplitude variation with azimuth 
in the moved out gathers, as I mentioned, we need to align the data and uh, we just uh, do the azimuthal velocity analysis. We align the data sets first, then uh, this analysis will be done on the aligned data sets. Example shown here, anisotropy estimated in the top panel and azimuthal data anisotropy in the bottom panel and the 3D visualization of the fracture zones in this uh, right-hand side, which is in the 3D visualization. But uh, we want to do modeling uh, or feasibility study before uh, understanding uh, what type of uh, uh, anisotropy is inside our seismic data. For this uh, modeling, we have uh, this azimuthal AVO modeling within ProAZ, Hampson Russell. Uh, why, need, why we need modeling? As I mentioned, we need to do fracture modeling. For example, we want to see how many type, uh, what type of fractures and if there is any different sets of the fractures in the, in, the, in the earth. So we want to model it. We want to model the influence of the fracture deep, for example, fluid content of that fracture and also VTI background. And we want to do feasibility studies. For this one, uh, we need the uh, relax and the seismic gathers. Seismic gathers just for, to get the information for the, uh, the angles and the offsets. And the to estimate uh, these uh, uh, rock physics properties like uh, acoustic impedance, shear impedance, and also to also estimate the, and also we input this, uh, uh, these anisotropic uh, parameters. Then the deliverables will be anisotropic models, synthetic gathers, and post stack attributes. So example shown here, so we have the, uh, uh, the locks, and these are the, the anisotropic parameters that calculated for that specific model that we had in mind, for example, uh, fracture modeling. In the bottom, we have this uh, uh, synthetic modeling and analyzing synthetics. These are the synthetics uh, gathers uh, compared to the real gathers. So, so using these two uh, tools, uh, can say, for example, it is close to, that modeling is close to our seismic data, so that model is, uh, applies for that type of data. So we can uh, then uh, apply that anisotropic uh, studies and that uh, model in mind, and we estimate, the, uh, for example, fracture pattern or fracture directions in our uh, seismic data in the reservoir. Right, so we go to layer-based methods. In the layer-based method, we have a um, JSON anisotropic inversion. This is patented CGG solution for HDI media. For this uh, workflow, we need a common offset angle data sets or common azimuth gathers. And we need at least uh, six azimuth gathers at the six uh, directions. And as a deliverable, we can get uh, anisotropic orientation and magnitude. And also, again, you can model it uh, based on, uh, for example, Hudson model or fracture density to estimate fracture density and the weakness uh, using those uh, uh, anisotropic information. The value is that it will be laterally vary, uh, varying wavelet compensated reservoir properties. It is layer-based property and <clears throat> these inversion properties are calibrated to the well control. For this uh, specific to uh, workflow, we use uh, uh, deterministic inversion uh, for simultaneous inversion and we invert uh, the different azimuths using a rock trace. Then uh, we will have uh, attributes, for example, VPVS at different azimuths. Then we use elastic volume evalu evaluator to model anisotropic parameters using that uh, elastic volume uh, evaluator. It's shown here, example. So we have um, seismic data, uh, which is 256 fold uh, at the nears and uh, it goes to 512 fold to the FARs. We have five par partial offset stacks from 600 meters to 3000 meters and six azimuth sectors, each covering 30 degrees. So these are azimuth sectors. And the inversion was done for each of these uh, sectors, got VPVS volumes. And from this VPVS volume, we use elastic volume evaluator to get this uh, anisotropic magnitude and anisotropic orientation. Example shown here. Uh, which is a map view. These black lines are the fault traces and these purple lines are the build tracks. And this is showing the magnitude of the anisotropy and the right ones uh, shows the azimuth of the uh, anisotropy. So 
if you see that at uh, around the wheels, uh, around the uh, fault, sorry, that uh, for example, we have this north south direction of this fracture. So this is showing that we have this north south direction at this uh, around this fault. This also been uh, used uh, uh, in uh, another field, which is coming under this paper from Filipova. And there is, as it shows that the fracture, which is shown as a arrows here, they are just uh, color correlate to the information that we got from this uh, <coughs> uh, azimuth uh, uh, dipole sonic lock. So they are confirming each other at the well location. So this is very good calibration of the results to the well location. So it, it is uh, confirming the, the correctness of the results. And also there was another example here that uh, it was used for microseismic studies and you see that the microseismic uh, uh, focal points are displayed on the, that well track and these are the f fracture orientation uh, and if you just check different uh, uh, stages of this uh, microseismic event you see that they are at the same almost the same direction of the, uh, the uh, maximum horizontal stress that has been estimated using this uh, anisotropic inversion method so saying so we have different methods uh, this table is available so you will have this um, uh, presentation later on and you can have a look at that but uh, just a quick uh, information is based on what you have, which means what seismic data you have. For example, the stacks or azimuthal gathers. So you can use different type of um, uh, direct or indirect methods. And uh, what you can get from them also are also uh, here. For example, based on your objective, if it is a, a seismic plus or, or low frequency, it is in your objective so you can decide which which type of tool to be used for your studies and also what you can get out of those uh, studies for example you want to anisotropic magnitude and directions thickness crack density or you want to get uh, this uh, delta delta t and delta n which is some sort of mo uh, modeling uh, had some modeling of the fractures so we are if you look at the uh, geological value we get based on the different data, and uh, for example, this is more post-stack data, I can apply geometric attributes, I can do the full stack inversion, I can get some geological value. Yes, I add uh, another dimension to that, then I get uh, uh, this angle, angle uh, gathers or angle uh, stacks, then I can get uh, geometric attributes and AV analysis now, and I can do simultaneous inversion. So this will give me more value because I can do a better uh, estimation of my reservoir. And yes, uh, with azimuthal data, we have uh, more parameters to characterize our reservoir and also estimate our uh, fracture and uh, stress, stress uh, in the reservoir. So more data, and we get better uh, geological value out of the data with you, by using uh, proper tools. Thank you very much. Bye for now.